everybody, this is Mario Hernandez from Media Current. In this week's Learning Bits tutorial, I'll talk about how to create patterns variations in Pattern Lab. And in a design system like Pattern Lab, this is a great way to create versions of a pattern that may demonstrate different states, different color schemes, different behaviors for a given pattern. Pattern Lab's approach to variations is very interesting. It uses a concept called pseudo patterns. Basically, pseudo patterns uh, give developers and designers the ability to quickly build multiple unique variants of an existing pattern. This feature is especially useful when developing templates and page style patterns or showing states of other patterns. Pattern Lab has a very unique approach to allowing you to create new variations. And it all depends on how you name your data source file. So in Pattern Lab, typically you will have a uh, JSON file that provides the content or placeholder content for a pattern. And so this is the file that makes it possible for new variations of the pattern to be created. The name pattern, not pun intended, that should be followed for naming your JSON file when creating new variations of a pattern should be as follows. The pattern name, the original pattern name, Right, so let's say we have a pattern called card or button. So the first part of this JSON file will be card or button, then followed by a tilde. Right after the tilde, you will type the name of the variation you want to create. So let's say button tilde primary or button tilde secondary dot JSON. So Pattern Lab looks at the tilde and the JSON file extension, the hints to use to determine that this is a pseudo pattern. So this pseudo pattern JSON file works exactly like the original JSON file on a typical pattern in Pattern Lab, but it's got the added benefit for the pseudo pattern to also inherit all the values from the existing pattern. So let's take a quick example on how we can create a variation or pseudo pattern for a button on our project. I'm going to create a pattern app project real quick just to have a clean project to work with and show you how variations or pseudo patterns are created. The first thing is I'm going to create a new folder anywhere on my computer. In this case, I'm going to do it inside my site training directory. And I can call this directory anything I want. I'm going to call it pattern app. Then in my command line, I'm going to navigate into this new directory. And then I'm going to run the command npm create pattern dash lab. After this, I'll get a couple of prompts, which I'll respond to. The main thing is I'm going to be using Twig for the engine and language to use so that we can add some logic to the patterns that we'll be building. The other option is to use mustache. Uh, which is basically just a, a variation of HTML that gives you extra benefits. In my case, Twig will do just fine. So once my project is created, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it inside my VS Code editor so that we can start building new pattern variations or pseudo patterns. If you use Pattern Lab before, you can see that Pattern Lab follows the atomic design methodology where uh, things that are the smallest patterns possible are called atoms, then molecules, organisms, templates, and pages. And so what we are going to do is we're going to create uh, first a button pattern. Pattern Lab already comes with a buttons pattern, but I'm going to remove that and create my own. Once in Pattern Lab, I'll navigate into the source directory, patterns, and atoms. And I have added item number six, which is 06-button. That's the name of our pattern. And I created this by simply creating a JSON file and a Twig file. Typically in Pattern Lab, by default, the data for the patterns is provided in a global uh, data JSON file. But for this example, I'm going to create individual JSON files for this component. Looking at the JSON file, I created an object, a JSON object with a few properties that will be handy as I build different versions of this button. And then in my Twig template, I simply have some logic to detect whether there is a URL. And if there is, I'll print a, an anchor for the link. 
otherwise I'll print a button tag for the button. So with those two files created now, I will compile Pattern App. And when I look at Pattern App on the browser and navigate to the Atoms section, I can see that there is a button pattern or component. And when I look at it, I see a pretty basic button component on my page. So that's our original pattern for the button, right? So let's go ahead and create a new variation. Let's say I want to create a button that is color red and that will become our primary button. Most websites use more than one kind of button or one color button. So I'm going to create a red one first. The only thing I need to do is to make a copy of my JSON file and I'm going to rename this file 06-button then tilde and then the name of the pseudo pattern or variation that I want in this case primary so once I rename this file and notice that just by the simple fact of creating this new JSON file with this unique naming convention if I look at pattern lab a new button variation has already been created it's exactly the same as the original because we haven't really added any special styles or special classes to add so that we can style it differently but if i go ahead and in my json file now i add a key for modifier which is a placeholder that the tweak template has for adding extra css classes to the component and i give this modifier the value of button dash dash primary and let's change the text so that it reads differently than the original button once I save these changes and I go in Pattern Lab, you can see that now my new primary variation is color red. I already made the changes in the CSS styles ahead of time so that we don't have to go through that. But it's basically just changing the color of the button when the class of button dash dash primary exists on the button. Let's repeat the process with a secondary button and I'm going to again make a copy of my JSON file and I'm going to rename this 06-button tilde secondary and repeat the same process of providing a special CSS class for the modifier and perhaps different text for the button label and with CSS styles already in place that I have you can see that now my secondary version of the button is completely different than the primary and the basic button. Just for fun, let's do one more example. I'm going to create an extra large version of the button. And I'm going to rename this again, 06-button tilde large, and apply the corresponding CSS class and some special text. And Pattern Lab now shows me a very large version of my button. So. The key to remember here is that we are not repeating the code for the button itself, the HTML that we wrote in our Twig template. The JSON files that we are creating are simply reusing that code over and over. And with the ability to pass a special CSS class to our pattern, we can now style that differently than the others. The last example I'd like to show you is, let's take a look at the under molecules. There is this under components. We have this uh, component for social share which is a list of different social media links and so let's say we want to create a new version of that let's create a version that is uses lighter colors than this one here so this time instead of going into the atom section in pattern i'm going to go into molecules and under the components section and you can see that there is a social share tweet template there just like we did before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new JSON file for this component or pattern. And I'm going to call it 00-social-share, then tilde, and I'm going to add the name of light for light color. And notice that just, again, just by creating this file, if I look in pattern now, now I have a new version or instance of my social share links. And in my JSON file, I'm going to add a key for modifier in which I will pass the class of social share dash dash light. And since I already have styles in place for this, 
And once the code is rendered and I can look in Pattern Lab, you can see that now I have uh, a new version of the social share icons, but this time the colors are lighter than the one on top. If you're interested in how I style things differently, uh, what I did is I simply went into the CSS section of Pattern Lab, and in there you will find a styles.css, and I just added styles, um, including the classes that I added to the components when I created the variations. Here are the styles for the button and the different variations that we created. Again, nothing special there, just uh, concatenating the original button class with the new classes that we added to each of the variations. And that's it. Very straightforward process, very neat thing to be able to do. It really helps with not having to repeat code and it ensures that you still have one source of code for your components or patterns. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.